John, I am free from worldliness and pride, sharing every moment his salvation with the Savior walking by my side. With the Let us pray. You want to commit yourself to the Lord for the Bible study today that the Lord himself will speak to your heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for our coming together to study the Bible together tonight. We thank you because whenever we come like this, we know that your spirit is present with us. And the Lord Jesus Christ has promised already that where two or three are gathered 
in his name, he'll be right in their midst. Jesus Christ, all who are arrested, shall be repaid. Nibi te ni meji tamia tava kujio koni oruko unyo wa ni belari wa. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you will reign supreme within every heart tonight in Jesus' name. That you, the living word, will make the written word clear to every heart in Jesus' name. And that your spirit, like a mighty wind, will breathe upon this word and make it alive in every heart. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Please turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 17. The worship belly repelu me sinu Corinthi Keji Uri Kano Eseketa Dinlogo. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Ni tori na bi ani kani ba wa ni no Christi odi da ti ton o wa ti joti koja lo kiye si wansi di ti ton. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Ni tori na awani ko fun Christi bi eni kwa lolo nti odo wa shikwe funye awan ben yini ko Christi eba lolo laja. Every believer should really realize how much God has invested in his life. Olukuluko ni bagbo ni oni lati money to to iye ishura iye bi eti lolo fisi nwa yere. For our salvation, he gave his only begotten Son. Ofi omo bi bi rekonso fun wa fun igbala wa. For our life, his only begotten Son died. Fun igbe aye wa omo bi bi rekonso jo kufu wa. Our joy eternal, the only begotten Son went through untold suffering and shame and anguish. And so God has invested so much on the believer to make him become a child in the family, a citizen in the kingdom. And to make us show our gratitude to God, he has also established various ministries in the church whereby every believer can be involved to show his gratitude unto God. These ministries give us some things to do within the church and also within our community. In the church, every believer is supposed to edify others. To care for other people. To comfort and to exhort others. And as he has left us to remain in the world, he gives us a ministry in this world to show those who are in darkness the light of the gospel through Christ-like life from faint love and a preaching or witnessing. And this is what we have come to consider today. We'll be looking at three major points. Number one, the power of example. Number two, commitment to evangelism. Number three, service in the church. Going to number one, we're shown the power of example. 
There are many people that do not understand evangelism properly. They center all they think about evangelism as the message they preach. But sometimes you know you have heard people say, Your lives speak so loud, I cannot even hear what you are saying. Which means sometimes your example can be more powerful than your communication, than your message, than your proclamation. With life, you preach, with your lips, you proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. If your life contradicts the message, the message becomes ineffective. If your life supports and backs up the message, the message becomes powerful. So we say it this way, that your evangelism does not begin when you open your mouth, your evangelism begins by the life you live. Evangelism does not begin when you stand up in the post and begin to declare the word of God. Evangelism began when you began to live the life of Christ for others to see. You already started planting the seed, either the seed of the gospel or the seed of unbelief by the life you live. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Matthew Ori Karo Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savour, wherewith shall it be salted? It is then for good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden on the foot of men. Here Jesus tells us a peculiar characteristic of salt. That salt sweetens. And it says it's that savor or flavor. And when somebody takes salt, it makes whatever you are eating to be very sweet. It is the life we live that demonstrates the sweetness of the gospel message. And as he said, he had the salt of the earth. He was telling the disciples that the life you live can actually bring sweetness and good goodness and love and kindness to the lives of other people. It is that salty characteristic that will pass on the grace of God, the sweetness of what is coming from Christ to come into the lives of other people. Do you realize that the more salt you take, the more you want to drink water? If you take, for example, granite sweets that is roasted with salt, the moment you take that, you like to drink some water. Salty food demands water. And here is what Jesus Christ is saying. That salty life will make the people that see you living that salty life to desire the water of life. They see the love of God in you. They see the joy of the Lord in you. And they see the peace of God operating in your life and family. 
the long suffering, the endurance, the forgiveness, the forbearance in your life. They see the gentleness, the kindness, and the meekness, and the humility in your life. As they see the goodness, caring for other people, helping other people, that is the characteristic that will draw them to want to take the water of life. You see your faithfulness. You see yourself control your temperance. The control of your life under the authority of the Spirit of God. The control of your tongue under the control of the Word of God. It is that salty lime that will make them to desire the water of life. This is what will make them to come to you and say, Sirs or sisters, we want to see Jesus. We see him in your life. How can we see him in our very life? You have not even started preaching. But your life is salty. And the salt is making them to desire the water of life. That is the power of example. On the other hand, if you have a bad example, careless example, a sinful example, a kind of example that has no salt, no taste in it. Do you realize whenever you take a food that has no salt in it, if you drink water at all, you almost feel like vomiting. Because of the absence of salt, you really don't have a desire to take water, much water. It is, it is the presence of the salt in that food that makes you to want to take water. But the absence of salt is going to make you almost feel like vomiting if you take much water. You see, if your life doesn't show the goodness of God, or the grace of God, or the fruit of the Spirit, or the character of Christ, people are not going to desire the water of life. Even the preaching that people give, they want to spill it out because there's no desire, because your life is not salty. So Jesus said, Ye are the salt of the earth. But then Jesus Christ mentions something. He says, But if the salt have lost its savor, where we shall it be salted? Here Jesus Christ himself refers to something that may happen to salt. That salt, it is possible for salt to lose its savor. Have you sometimes been careless that you are carrying maybe a bag of salt or you are carrying a tin of salt and because of carelessness, the thing, you know, just dropped down and then it's scattered among the sand and to recover it is so difficult because as you try to scrape the ground and get the salt you scrape the sand with it how are you going to make use of that salt sometimes you know you have the salt in a bag and then you put the bag on bare ground dusty ground and the moisture getting from the from the land and from the soil gets into the salt by the time you take that bag of salt the color of the dusty ground is already appearing on the salt and eventually when you look at the salt it has lost its attraction 
attractiveness. So eventually what do you do? What you do is that you just throw it away. Because you know that salt when it is mixed with sand or with dust or the moisture of the ground has gotten into it eventually you discover the salt becomes useless jesus said it is then good for nothing or to be cast out remember this is talking about christians talking about believers talking about disciples and jesus said there is a possibility that a christian can lose the flavor the saltiness or the savor or the goodness or the grace of god or the character of the believer and when that happens the only thing you can do with that is just to cast him out and instead of being useful in the kingdom of God, this Christian is now trodden under the foot of men. Are they not Christians like that? That have lost their savor. They have lost the sweetness. They have lost the goodness in their lives. They have lost the sin that made the lives of other people to desire Christ. They have lost that sin that will make others to say, I want Jesus, I want what you have. They have become so ordinary. Not only that they have become so ordinary, they have become so worthless and so useless in the church that all you can do is just to cast them out to be trodden under the foot of men they don't have any ministry they don't have any influence they don't have anything to contribute to the lives of other people anymore only to be trodden down under the foot of men but a good example is powerful that to make people to desire to want to get saved when last did somebody in the house you live say by the way which church do you go i will follow you there next sunday by the way when last did anybody in your place of work say you are so peaceful you are never worried about anything and your life is so pure your life is so holy that uh, i go to church but i realize that you must be going to a different church which church do you go i'd like to follow you there next sunday is there enough salt in your life that your unbelieving husband will call you and say well i've been watching you but now i see i just need to follow you so that we can go to this same church you are going i want to give my life to jesus christ now not because of preaching not because of what i heard over the radio just because your life is so salty and your life is drawing me to christ when last did somebody that just came to church and has been coming for some time watching everybody singled you out and came to you and said brother i'm sorry to disturb you what is your name sister i'm sorry to disturb you what is your name i watch your life every time i see you there's something within me that says 
oh God, I want to be like this brother. I want to be like this sister. And I know it's because of Jesus in your life. Can you show me the secret? Can you preach to me? I want to live a better life as that ever happened in your life. The power of example. In verse 14, it says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be healed. The light of the world. The light of the world. Telling us that the whole world without a Christian is in darkness. You see, when somebody is in darkness. He doesn't see his way. He is at a crossroad. And all the street lights are off and everything is dark. And you cannot read the signboard that points this way is the way to that place. This way is the place to that other street. But when the light is put on all of a sudden everything changes you realize when a place of work and before you entered in everywhere is dark and people just knock their heads on this and knock their heads on that because there is darkness darkness brings fear darkness brings inactivity because you see you literally cannot move here or there in darkness Darkness brings confusion. Darkness brings anxiety. And darkness will not allow you to even think. It brings out a life that is unable to think anything or do anything at all. You cannot plan in darkness. You don't know the way you are going in darkness. You don't know what you are stumbling at in darkness. You cannot even avoid evil, avoid danger, avoid accident in darkness. But all of a sudden, light comes in. And the fear that had been, you don't know what was around. All that fear vanishes away the moment the light comes. Inactivity is arrested. Immediately light comes. And now if you want to move, if you want to stand up, if you want to go somewhere, now you can see the light to walk by. The inability to think and inability to write and put your thoughts on paper, all that just vanishes away light has come. Are you like that to the people that surround you? Do you dispel the fear in their lives by the life you live, by the way you speak? Do you bring orderliness to the disorderly of their lives by your very presence and by the light to shine. Are they just happy to become active, actively involved in the things of the Lord by your very presence? Are you letting your light so shine? In verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good good works. What is going to be the result? If your light is shining, if they can see your good works, what will be the result of the impact on the people around you? Verse 16, they will glorify your father which is in heaven. They will glorify the God of salvation. They say, do you know what? 
out that man was a chain smoker. That man was a terrible, wicked fellow. That man was the biggest hypocrite I ever saw in my life. I don't know what has happened to him. But a change came. That man cannot even smoke a stick of cigarette now. Talk about drunkenness before I've seen him drunk. I don't know how many times he just falls into the gutter or lies in the sitting room right in his vomit. He was a man that had no shame at all. But now his life is so clean. His life is so gentle. A change has come to him. And then I interviewed him and said, how did it happen to you? And he said, I got saved by the grace of God. And these people are going to glorify God because of the light now shining in your life. He was on you realize then the life of a believer is a ministry by itself if your life is patterned after the example laid down by the Lord Jesus Christ, that life is going to draw many others to the Lord. Your life should be an example to others in the church and others in your community. Know this. Whatever knowledge you have, whatever gifts you manifest, everything will be worthless if your example is sinful or if your example is misleading. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth. Be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Here Paul, by inspiration, wrote to exhort, to counsel, to challenge, and to command Timothy. Timothy he said, let no man despise the youth. Obviously, Timothy was a young preacher. Because he is called a youth. Not only that, in chapter 5, verse 1. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. He's talking to Timothy that the elderly people are like his father, which means Timothy was actually a young fellow. And he said, The younger men, as brethren, he said, Remember, you are age mates, as brethren, as colleagues, as peers. The elder women as mothers. Obviously, Timothy was young. And he said the younger sister, the younger as sisters with all purity. Now he said in chapter 4 verse 12, Let no man despise thy youth. How will a young minister be effective as a young minister? Is it always by telling the people in the church? Even though I am young, God has made me a leader. Therefore, you must bow, you must bend, you must submit, you must prostrate, you must kneel down. Is that what Timothy was to do? Is it always by telling the people in the church? Should Timothy be saying, not mind? 
and in my age i am your father in the lord therefore everybody must bow and bend was that the method timothy was to use See, to be reminding all those people every Monday, every Thursday, every Saturday, every Sunday, obey them that have the rule over you. Was that the method Timothy was to apply? Paul said, Timothy, you know the method to really be a leader, be an example. Paul, we put out our Timothy, oh my, be an angel, yeah, daddy, to talk only. Not minding your age, just be an example of the believers. He says, if you are an example to the believers, you don't worry about the other things, everything will fall into line. An example in word. That is, they, show, they see the example of this young minister. That if there are two people that have a case, it's not going to just uh, make uh, you know the final judgment by listening to only one person alone. They know that it's an example in word. It doesn't speak words that are redundant, that are not necessary. It doesn't speak words that you will eventually find out that those words are not true. It's an example in word. <laughs> Ben, you are the boy. I'm a judge. I think I'm looking for you. So, I'm looking for you. 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 You never hear those words from his mouth. So to be a leader is the power of the example of the life we live. This be an example in conversation. You take that word conversation in two ways. Number one, in our ordinary conversation, talking with one another. That the words you hear that man say in an ordinary conversation, I mean, that man is very conscious of the presence of Christ when he's discussing with people. He never says anything that Christ shouldn't hear. <laughs> says Timothy, do you know how to really preach the gospel? The foundation of preaching the gospel is living the life. The foundation of preaching effectively is that an example in conversation. There is no frivolity, there is no jesting, there is no bad joke. In conversation, the second meaning of that word is in your manner of life. And says, Timothy, the way to make people understand what you are preaching and to accept your leadership is not by being boisterous and being callous and being wicked and being overpowering and having so much great authority telling people to bow how to bend all the time in every message just show the example of a Christ-like life he said be an example in charity in love an example in spirit in your very attitude an, an example in faith an example in faith an example in faith 
leader that has faith in God. And preaching, living it out. And also in purity, holiness, and righteousness. You see, every believer's life should make a positive impact on the lives of those who are living in the community where he's living or working. If all these virtues of the Christian life, if they are discovered in your life, you have started preaching already without opening your mouth. When people can begin to say, he appears to have a real genuine experience. This fellow is different. This fellow is just like Christ. It is like we hear of those Bible days. This fellow is different. That is the power of an example. Christian. Without that good example, that Christ like life, your preaching has no foundation. Your preaching or your message will be like a house that is built upon shallow ground without a foundation. And the wind will blow. And the floods will come. And the rain will descend. And beat upon that house of your preaching. And everything is going to collapse because the preaching has no foundation. The wind of contrary doctrine is going to blow. And the floods of all the opposition against what you are preaching is going to come. And because the preaching has no foundation of Christian living, all this opposition will just make your preaching to collapse. It will not have a single effect on anybody. Why is it that in your house fellowship you preach and preach and preach and nobody ever gets saved? Because the preaching has no foundation. Why is it in the district we have activity, activity, activity and nobody gets saved and even those who are saved before they are backsliding. Those who have not backsliding are not living, they are not dying, they are at the edge of life. Almost fainting out away from the Christian life. Why? Because the preaching has no foundation. Because the foundation of effective preaching is the power of a Christian life, the power of example. Haven't laid that foundation. Now you want to commit yourself to evangelism publicly, proclaiming that Christ is the Savior of the world. Now we go to that second part commitment to evangelism. But please remember without the power of example evangelism becomes meaningless Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 and verse 20 go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost I want you to realize here are the words of Jesus Christ to the whole church. 
pe awon oro Jesu Christ Oluwa gan ni si gbogbo ijo lapapo now what i've said now is very important o ti mo ti so bayi se pataki do these are not the words of Jesus to only one individual it is to the whole church e yi ki se oro Jesu Christ si eyo enikan so so pere o ji oro re si gbogbo ijo you know there are people that misunderstand these words are read to you ijo mo pa won kan wa ti won si oro ti e mo ti kase ti gbo re yi tumo bi o yi therefore and teach all nations pe ni tori na e lo e ma ko orilede gbogbo and say god has told them this single individual god has told him to go to all the countries of the world and preach the gospel to all the creatures eni yi yo si wa da wi pe olorun ti so fun ohun gege bi enikan lati ma lo ka akiri gbogbo orilede aye lati ma wa so re fun gbogbo eda no it's not so sugbon rara o ko ri be the great commission is given to the whole church ise iranse tabi ase nla na je yi ti a ti gbe le gbogbo ijo lowo and it is the whole church that is to preach the gospel to all nations gbogbo ijo lapapo lo si ni lati wa su yin rere fun gbogbo eda ni gbogbo orilede the great commission is not given to me alone ise iranse la na emi nikan ko la gbe le lowo go from one nation to the other to the other to the other and say that i am to preach the gospel to all the nations it is not so lati lo lati orilede kan di orilede mi ran di orilede mi ran ke si wi pe emi nikan ni jesus ti fi le lowo ko ri be the great commission is not for you as an individual alone ise iranse la na ki se wo nikan so gege bi enikan lo wa fo say that god has given me this great commission i am to go to all the nations it is not for you alone it's for the whole church ki wa ma wi pe emi gan ni jesus ti di gbe ise nla yi le lowo pe ki lo si gbogbo aye ki si wa sun gbogbo eda rara o gbogbo ijo lagbe le lowo see there are people that never do any solid work where they are ije o mo awon kan wa ti won ki se ise to mo yen lori ni bi ti won wa and they will go from district to district they will not stay in their own district and preach the gospel they say god has given me the whole place to preach the gospel they do a little here that has no fruit they do a little there that has no root they do a little there that has no effect they do a little there that has no convert they are just hopping and going from place to place because of the misunderstanding of going to all nations iru awon eniyan be awon yo ma tinu ekun kan lo sinu ekun miran wo si wi pe ise mi mu re lo ka akiri gbogbo ekun emi ni christ gbe le lowo ni tori na won a se die ni bi ti ko ni eso won a se die lohun ti ko fi gbogbo mule won a se die ni bo miran ti ko ti le ni pa lori eni kankan won a si wi pe awon nikan ni o gbodo se gbogbo re do see the way they did it those disciples of jesus christ ijo ori bi awon eni jesus christ won ni ti se ise na bi stayed the disciples the apostles in particular they stayed in jerusalem awon apostles ni pataki julo won duro ni jerusalem o they had a strong base in jerusalem won si fi gbogbo to lagbara mule ni jerusalem Apostles chapter 2 we discovered they were in Jerusalem. In the same apostle ori keji a se awari pe Jerusalem ni won wa. In Acts chapter 3 they were still in Jerusalem. In ori ke te se awon apostle Jerusalem ni won wa si be. Chapter 4 they were in Jerusalem when they declared to the council that there is no other name given among men whereby we can be saved except the name of Jesus. In ori ke ni yi o e se awon apostle Jerusalem ni won si wa si be ti won fi kede ti won si jo fun awon ibimo wi pe ko si oruko mi ran labi orun ti a fi fun ninu eniyan. chapter 5 the council said you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine ni ori karo awon igbimo na wi fun won wi pe e ti fi je e ti fi e ko yin kun Jerusalem o chapter 6 and chapter 7 is still what took place in Jerusalem ori kai party ke je je awon to sele ni Jerusalem o si be in chapter 8 the believers that have been groomed and taught and trained and well equipped now they scattered all over the this the apostles were still in Jerusalem but the others scattered all over and they preach the gospel everywhere ba yi ni ori kejo awon ome yin ti a ti ko ti oro olorun ti ye ti won ti fi gbogbo mule ti won ti di akikanju ninu igbagbo ba yi won lo ka akiri si awon ile bi ti o ku sugba awon apostle duro sibe ni Jerusalem o why did god help deep alive to go through all these various all those uh, nation this nigeria kini di ti olorun fi ran ijo deep alive lowo lati lo ka akiri gbogbo awon ipinle ni orilede nigeria yi ah because for many years i stayed in lagos here and did the work in lagos here and established the headquarters here and trained the people and equipped the people and taught the people line upon line precept upon precept to make the foundation and the headquarters strong like the jerusalem church nitori pe fun opolopo odun mo duro ni ilu eko ni yi mo si nko awon eniyan na mo fi oro olorun ye won lesese 
pa ni dani leko ati orisirisi awon pade asin ko wa ngbe woro lati mu ki won ni okun ati agbara ninu oluwa lati mu ki o dabi ijo akoko ni olu ijo wa ni eko ni among those who have been taught then they began to leave Lagos and go to this state and go to this local government and go to this state and go to that local government and they too they followed my example they stayed where they were in that state and taught the people and trained the people and equipped the people and from that um, from the state capital they began to also send people to the local government and the towns to the villages and to the cities and those people again they stayed there they, they were not trying about they stayed there and they did a solid work that is why God has now blessed deeper life all over this nation. I want to ask you to cut your own to you. You never see law, Latin, co, Tiabes, you know, and also I want to play. They were going to see day or week, we learn now. What do you mean? I want to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you now. Mo mu ki oro Olorun ye won bi won tin ko won lesese nigba ti won ba si ti gba nje fo Oluwa won ma ran won lo si awon ijoba bile lo si awon lulu si awon abule nigba ton won ni ba tun de be awon pelu atu bere si sise ki se pe won kan lo lati because de ibomi ran won duro lati se to mo yen lori ki o to di pe won ran awon ijade but you see what is happening now sugbo wa ri o to sele bayi you put a coordinator over this particular district o bi alakoso kan sori ekun kan his business running up and down will not allow him to stay on that district there's no solid work in that district ise re o ko wo re ko ni je ko duro ni ekun yin lati se to mu na doko nitori na yo kan ba ti because lo si ibomiran you put a son and leader by his soul o bi adaragbe kan sori agbegbe kan all his activities running up and down will not allow him to do solid work in that zone and the work is not progressing in their hands bo bo ju se re ise ni lohun ti o se ka kiri ko ni je ki o boju to agbegbe yi ko si se to to mu na doko nitori na ko ni si eso kan kan ni be you put a language coordinator language leader upon a particular language and because of being a businessman and selling spare parts and traveling to the east and traveling to all these places and say you will not take care of the work in this language district god has called me to go to abia state to go to anambra state to go to enugu state and to go to imo state and to go to cross river all just running up and god has told me to preach the gospel to all creatures he has no convert here at the headquarters he has no convert over there just running about you will stay where you are if you stay where you are I stay where I am, he stays where he is, and all the people in Ghana stay where they are, and those people preach the gospel, the whole church will preach the whole gospel to all the nations. <laughs> ko 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 duro lori ijo yi lati ma boju to won yo nitori ise re boye on ta awon eya roko yo ma ti eko lo si awon ipinle miran ni ila oro nigba ti o ba kuro ni be yo to pada wa yo ni bayi olorun ti pe mi lati lo si ipinle enugo lati lo si ipinle abia lati lo si ipinle imo kaakiri be yo ma lo kaakiri yo si wi pe bayi o n sise kaakiri nigba ti o ba si de ko si eso leko ni ti ti o wa ko si eso olorun ni bi ti o wa pelu nitori pe ko duro yi ko ni ni eso sugbo bi o ba duro ni bi ti o wa ti emi pelu duro ni bi ti mo wa ti o n pelu duro ni bi ti o wa olukuluku a leader is supposed to stay with the people and train them and equip them to do the work because it is those people you are training those people you are equipping that will eventually be able to take the gospel to all creatures all over the world so go ye therefore and teach all nations. It is given to the whole church. Will you follow us here? Will you be faithful in a house fellowship? And you will encompass all that house fellowship locality. And you reach all the people around that house fellowship. And that fellowship on the other side also does the same. The brothers as fellowship leaders do their part. The sisters as fellowship leaders do their part. You will discover that all of this locality will be won for Jesus Christ. But if it is one person always running about and hopping about and touching this and touching that and doing this and doing that and never really jack of all trade, but what? Tell me out loud. Jack of all trade, master of none. Jesus Christ is the 
and so go ye therefore teach all nations giving to the whole church baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even unto the end of the world in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 18 in all things of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation you see what it says? He has reconciled us to himself. And these people that are reconciled to himself, he has given every one of them the ministry of reconciliation. Look at the last part of verse 19. He has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. All the people who have been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ, that means all those who have been born again, they have got this ministry of reconciliation as well. In verse 20, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. And now we stand in Christ's side and we're telling the people, be ye reconciled to God. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 1 and 4. Acts chapter 8, verse 1 falls. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Saul, Lucy, ni O, si kure. Ni a koko na, inu ni bini in lakan, di de si, jote wa ni Jerusalem. As it took bobo wa kale, jag, bobo Judea, o Samaria. Afi, our apostoli. Here we are told that there was a great persecution. And the great persecution scattered the believers in Jerusalem. God allowed the persecution. Why did he allow the persecution? The apostles had been in Jerusalem. Teaching the people. Training the people. Offering fellowship to the people. And a fellowship was such a wonderful fellowship. That these trained people now, they sat down. They didn't want to go anywhere. They filled Jerusalem with the doctrine of Christ. And yet everybody still stayed in Jerusalem. And so God allowed the persecution to come upon them to scatter them everywhere especially to Judea and to Samaria and those people that were not scattered were the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ I want you to realize what has taken place the church in Jerusalem had grown to thousands and now in chapter 8 after the death of Stephen then persecution became very intense and very very serious and the Bible says literally all those believers in their thousands they were scattered they left Jerusalem they were not allowed to take their houses with them they couldn't 
didn't even time to wait and be collecting money before they can go to where they were scattered. Those certificates did not remember they were to take their they were just in a hurry because the persecution was terrible. But remember they had been trained and well equipped. Those people that were scattered, what happened to them? The places they went. Were they sorrowful? Why has this happened to us? With all our praying, with all our fasting, with all our faithfulness, with all our, faithfulness, with all our eagerness and decision to stay in Jerusalem. We have lost all our property. What kind of faith and what kind of religion, what kind of Christianity is this Christ? What have you done to us? Now our children are going to miss a year in their education because they have all, we have all been scattered away from Jerusalem to get them fixed up in schools. Now look at what has happened to us. No, look at verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. And here today we may be scattered. It may not be by persecution. It may be by our commerce. It may be by our merchandise, by our trading. We are scattered to various Past, and you have been well taught. They that were scattered abroad preach the word everywhere. <laughs> It may be through education that you have been you have been in the church here, but now you've gained admission to a particular college or a particular place. They that were scattered everywhere, they preach the gospel. Just like it may be by the national youth service. You have been trained here, you have been you have been taught the word of God here. Now you have come out of school and they send you somewhere outside this city. They that were scattered everywhere, they went everywhere preaching the word. Only the It may be by transfer from your place of work. Transferred out of Lagos, and because of that, you are now in another place but here we have trained you in the church we have equipped you in the church they that were scattered they went everywhere preaching the word but now i need to emphasize something here how many people remained in the jerusalem church when all the members were scattered do you know how many people remained anybody wants to tell me yes 12 thank you 12 people remained in Jerusalem. In the whole of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Only 12 people remained. All the other believers were scattered. Now, what are we going to do? No workers. No ushers. No house fellowship leaders. And no choir. No security. security and scattered everybody. That's what they tell us in our districts. They say we don't have enough workers. Except these uh, coordinator and these zonal leaders and these women representatives. Only 12 people remain. But you see, as those people, 12 people remain, they continue the work. Let me show you the result in Acts chapter 21. Acts chapter 21 verse 20. And, and when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, 
how many thousands of Jews there are which believe and they are all zealous of the law. Neba ti won si gbo won yin Olorun logo won si wi fun pe ara kore iwo ri ye gbegberun ninu awon Jew ti o gbagbo gbogbo won ni o si ni itara fun ofe where is that ni bo le yi ti sele look at it from verse 17 wo la te se keta di logo and when they were come to Jerusalem the brethren received us gladly neba ti awa si de Jerusalem awon ara kore si fi ayo gba wa the following and the following day Paul went in with us unto James and to all the elders that were present ni ijo keji awa ba Paul lo sodo Jacob this is Jerusalem. Jerusalem Verse 19. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. Remember, this is Jerusalem. And in verse 20, when they had heard it, they glorified the Lord. And they said unto him, Thou seest, brother Paul, how many thousands of Jews there are, that is, there are in Jerusalem now, which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. Arakore Paulu, I wari ye gbegbe run ninu awon Jew ti o gbagbo o ni ni Jerusalem gbogbo won ni o si ni itara fun ofe You see those 12 they had now multiplied into thousands again in that same Jerusalem Ijo o tun ri bayi pe awon meji layi won ti po si ni ye ni egbegbe run ni Jerusalem ko na If we really want to serve God we cannot say because there is no worker because there is no choir because there are no house fellowship leaders because the others they are not staying here if 12 people can multiply to thousands by the time you get to Acts chapter 21. How much more in your district now? You are more than 12. Why can't we get something done if we really want to serve God and work for God? Be about that. She said, She said, For a lot of people, I hear what you for a lot of pata pata. I could live with me. I could know she said, I could know I want to call you. I could know I want to read that for you. I want to make you like better. You know, I need to do something. What's she said? I'm talking about. In Romans chapter 1 verse 14. In I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is. I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. He says in verse 14, I am a debtor. To the Greeks, the philosophical educated ones. To the barbarians, unlearned illiterate. To the wise, civilized ones. To the unwise, the primitive, illiterate ones. So, as much as in me is. As long as I can breathe. As long as I'm healthy. As, Lord, as long as the Lord gives me chance and gives me life. I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. But those who are not ready, what's their problem? They are ashamed to talk about Jesus. To Stand up and proclaim the name of Jesus. As he said in verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greeks. And so it is our responsibility to preach the gospel everywhere. That's our commitment to evangelism. Yet we have service in the church. That leads us to point three. The Spirit of the Lord is calling us to service in the church. And there are many areas of need and service in which we can all be involved. And every member in the church should seek a place of useful and service within the church where you yourself you are being fed and you are receiving spiritual 
spiritual nutrient. Don't you see it is a great honor if God can commit any area of the work in the church in your hand. Don't you see it as a great honor? I hope you dare not say that I'm not useful where I am. This area of the work, I don't like it. It's too small. The Lord has given you something to do, do it with all your mind. The Lord sometimes will make us begin in a seemingly unnoticed, insignificant area of service to prepare us for greater service in His church. And none of us should despise the days of small beginnings. God requires faithfulness even in small things. And it is that faithfulness in little things that will prepare us for greater, higher responsibilities in the kingdom of God. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers to what we do not all have the same responsibility he gave some this and some that and some the other kind he gave us different responsibilities in the service of the Lord in the church and those of us who are workers and leaders in the church he has placed us in a particular place to do something in the church but let me ask you for what purpose do we have this responsibility in the church verse 12 for the perfecting of the saints it's not for the confusion of the saints it is not for the op of the saints. It is not for weakening the saints. It is not for the scattering of the saints. You see, there are some people that they are workers, so they say they are leaders. All they are doing to the church, all they are doing to the saints, that they are confusing the people. Their so-called ministry of service in the church is for the oppression of the people in the church. But our work and ministry in the church is not for the oppression of the saints. Not for the confusion of the saints. But dribbling the saints so much in order here, command there, this one day until we scatter them. It is not to overload the people with activity and activity until those loads of activity will so press them down and press out prayer from their lives and those saints are weakened. The person is so busy with all these crowded things that she doesn't even have any chance to cook for the husband at home or to spend any time with the husband at home. That's not the purpose of ministry in the church. The woman is so full of activity she doesn't have any chance at all to take care of her little, little children. That's not 
not the that's not the reason for our leadership in the church. Oh, Billy, you could for just a tobe get your jack for Cotilla, Raya, Cacara for one, a cake, a Latin told you one in a bee, a lake, he said, Dita Vina, one that it a bishop, and I said, The one is so busy with church activity that even when the when the husband is sick and the husband is almost dying like this, activity, activity will not allow her to take care of her dying husband. That is not church work. Oh, Billy, you could for just a tobe get your jack with. Oko re nku lo ba yi o wa lese kan ye se kan ro si be ko ra yi lati toju re eleki se ise ijo and the man is so busy that he doesn't have time to even overlook the lives of the children that the children are getting familiar spirit here familiar spirit there the man is so busy with church activity has no minute has no moment to spend with any of his children oko ri yi kun fun oju se to be ge to je pe ko ti le ra yi lati gbo ti awon omo re awon omo re to je pe emi esu emi emi re n ba le ni lohun ko the daughters of this man that are getting kind of they are becoming teenagers they are almost getting pregnant the man has no time to cancel out his daughters and the boys of this man these boys are almost going to put uh, girls in the family way the man activity upon activity he has no chance to even take care of his teenage boy is that church service <laughs> Once in Loka, I carry once, once, one bar, I want to get to Jacob, if you're not in the fair leg, a bony one in Tassiba, Kora, you like to bow any more, a lati bowers or a lati cover, I want more of the one to you, I can't look or see, but you don't want to do it, say, say, Johnny. You see, he destroys himself by that activity, he destroys the church by that activity, he does not release these members in various families to go and look at the urgent problems in their families and apply Christian principle and the word of God to the situations in their families and all that he does is just overload them with activity so that leader is raised up for the weakening and the destruction and the scattering of the saints. <laughs> to be ge to je pe ko ra aye lati fi eto si o ngogo lati mu ka awon yen mo bi won se le yanju gogo ohun to ba sele si won nipa ilana ati agbe kale oro olorun oju se lori oju se lo gberu nje le ije ise ran ise ijo bi the coordinator that is so busy with church activity has no time to pray personal prayer private prayer there's no time he has time to pray except when he's going to eat and when he's going to, you know, go out of the house. So, Lord, watch over us so we don't have accident. Uh, bless this for sanctify. That's all the prayer he prays. How can he be an effective leader in the church? Activity is too much. There's no prayer. Adura ti are ni lati bo Olorun soro fun ra re afi gba to ba fe je n tabi to fe jade pe Olorun abi a to tin jade pa wa mo ma je ki jambo oko sele si wa e Oluwa yo nje si mo ki o si je ko se ara wa lore ko si akoko fun adura kan kan mo iru alakoso be ba wo ni ofun e yo se ma dagba soke ninu emi let us be sincere and cut up the activities that destroy activities that weaken activities that depress and oppress activities that confuse because we leaders are raised up for the perfecting of the saints for the world of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. Nitori na awa gege bi adari ninu ijo eje ki a je olohun to si ara wa ki a si mu gbogbo awon ojuse ti o npa ni run ojuse ti o rin ni mole ti o so ni di alai lera ti o si mu ni lara ba awon eniyan ki a mu kuro ninu ijo nitori pe idi ti olohun fi gbe asoke ni fun ase pe awon eniyan mi mo fun imu dagbara christi ati fun ise iranse na but we must not evaluate any given any god given responsibility in the church on the basis of how other people see that responsibility or that assignment or the position sugbon ako gbodo gbe obi won yi ke yi ninu oju se te olorun ba fun wa se ninu ijo re lori bi awon elomi ran ba se nwo ipo tabi aye na si the bible says that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of god bibeli wi pe eyi ti agbe ni yin lodun eniyan irira ni ni waju oluwa awon shirun ko be comparing with ourselves with other people ako si gbodo ma fi ara wa wi awon elomi ran that so and so is having a public ministry everybody sees her everybody sees him that's not our concern pe lagbaje ayi ise ran se re toju taye ni gbogbo eyan ni won ri eleyiki ko kan wa the one i'm doing nobody sees me i'm very fit in the private but nobody sees me that doesn't matter eyi ti mo se ko se ni kan ni to ri mi ni kokon bi ti mo wa moju olo to yi ko ja mo nkan kan in second corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 ninu corinthians keji ori kewa ese keji la for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves to some that commend that praise that exalt themselves 
but they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. They are not among the wise virgins. Whatever God gives us to do and gives us privilege and opportunity to be involved in, in the church, be faithful to it. And do all things to the glory of God without murmuring and without pride or vain glory. Obviously, God has spoken to our hearts today. But you see, without praying about it, it will not be any fruit. Does the example of your life have any power to convict and convert other people? Is the example of your life a solid foundation on which you can now preach, you can build your preaching ministry, and then that foundation will hold your preaching ministry and it will be effective to the people? Are you committed to evangelism? Are you a useful member of the church or are you a useless, worthless member in the church? Let's rise up and talk to God in prayer. God can help you. If you don't have a good example, God can help you. If your example is driving other people from the kingdom of God, you can pray tonight and God will help you. If the example is misleading other people, God can help you tonight as you pray and repent. If the salty characteristic that makes people to desire the water of life is not in your life, God can help you tonight to pray. Why don't you be sincere and be serious and be fervent in your prayer? Are you so tired you cannot pray? Are you so weak you cannot pray? Are you so much in a hurry you cannot pray? Let's talk to God in prayer. Let's talk to God in prayer. Be thou an example. Let your life demonstrate the teaching of the Bible. Let your life show that you are real, serious, devoted, believing. Christian. So that your life can draw other people to know the Lord. Talk to God in prayer. Are you committed to evangelism? I mean real effective evangelism. I mean a kind of evangelism that is being built on the solid on the solid foundation of your spiritual life. Is evangelism your lifestyle? You preach in your place of work. You contact to have the people, new people you see. Do you declare the gospel to them? Are you useful in this church? Or are you a problem in the church? Oppressing other people in the church? Weakening the faith of other people in the church? What good impact does your presence in this church have on other people within the church? Are you edifying the body of Christ? Or is your example making them to think of going back to the world? Are you for the perfecting of the saints? 
Preparing the saints, the children of God, for service, for work of the ministry. Edifying and building up and challenging other people within the church. You are an encouragement in this church. Are you a stumbling block? I believe you have been blessed. Don't let this message die. Listen to it again and pass it to others. You can get more from God at the Deeper Life Bible Church. Our headquarters is Deeper Life Bible Church, Bagada, Lagos, Nigeria. Blessed are your ears for hearing these things. We'll meet in heaven if you do them.